All right, uh, some boards back. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks to PCBWay for supporting channel, uh, giving me free PC boards, and we have a bunch here. So let's take a look at them. Uh, right away, I noticed an error that I made, um, so I'm gonna have to spin these boards. Um, when the last time I laid out a, a PC board, yeah, here's a PC board that I laid out for an SMA connector. Uh, I laid this out in Eagle, and uh, I don't remember whose um, footprint I used for the SMA connector, but it was it was perfect. Um, and uh, when I went to KiCad, um, I pulled off an SMA connector, and it's just wrong. It's just, I mean, I. Th might be able to sort of get some solder in to make it work. I think we'll be able to to use these for some things, but it's just wrong. So I'm gonna have to lay out my own my own pad for uh, for uh, SMA connectors. That's that's a shame. Anyway, uh, what this is, it's a low pass filter um, breadboard. Okay, it has a capacitor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor, inductor. I mean a Capacitor. So, um, should be able to try different things out. Uh, I like the, in, the idea of input and output with SMA connectors always because that's what my test equipment is always hooked to. So, um, I can use these for more than just low pass filters. I can put on other types of things that I want to have some type of input and output, maybe an amplifier, some other things, just a little breadboard area. Um, I thought of maybe making it real fancy with a whole bunch of holes and everything, but um, I think it's simple is better. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll do a fancier one. Like, I think I mentioned before, you know, what is the perfect RF uh, proto board? I'm really not sure what that is, but uh, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll load this up and uh, see if we can't make it do something. All right, I'll show you what I mean here with this SMA connector. It's, uh, I think I got fooled by, it looked like the right thing, but it's off by like a factor of two or three. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can make it work. I can make it work, but it's not, it's not exactly pleasant. I mean, it is nice to have the wide, the wide trace because, uh, if you're using, uh, the 1.6 millimeter boards or 62 mil boards, you want about to have, have about a hundred mil trace to have the right impedance for 50 ohms. So this is about right, but uh, it's just barely. <laughs> It'll just barely work. But no, I'll be able to use these boards. They'll they'll be all right. So yeah, let's put on a couple connectors and uh, and uh, find some parts we want to load. All right, let's see if we can put some solder on this thing. Sort of make it work, yeah? I guess it's okay. I guess it's all right. I'm gonna make my own custom, uh, custom footprint though. This is just not, not exactly what I want. Drop my soldering iron. Okay. Let's try another one here. This board is not. That other uh, connector was a nice tight fit on the. Uh, PC board and held itself on, so I'm gonna have to tweak these a little bit so they, uh, they hold on. There, that's better. That way I don't need six hands. Right about there. It's one of the joys of using this Metcalc um, soldering iron. It doesn't care about heat sinking, wicking. It, 
uh, delivers the heat needed, compensates immediately. Um, I made another error on this board that I probably shouldn't admit, <laughs> but I will, because I try to keep the channel honest. Let, let, me, let me show you my other, my other fupa set of, set of words these days. All right, so you notice my logo here, low pass filter. Um, when you put text on the board, you have to make sure you're on the right layer. <laughs> and so this here is added on the silkscreen layer and then you get, you, you get everything on the silkscreen layer. And, and I had intended to have this on the silkscreen layer. And at the time I was laying out the board, I accidentally put it on the copper layer and you get it in copper instead of in ink. And it automatically puts a little box around it. So anyway, I mean, this is the way they used to do it old school. So I'll, I'll say that I, that I intended to do, <laughs> I intended to do that. Um, yeah, but I sort of, I sort of messed up, but it does look nice <laughs> in any event. <laughs> there you go. In any event, it looks all right. All right, now the center pins are the trickiest. That looks good. All right. Okay, I think the first one I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move all the parts off of this board. Uh, this is my low pass filter that I did. I'm just gonna put them all onto a PC board and make it look pretty. So I'll call this prototype and I'll call this uh, alpha unit. <laughs> we'll go, we'll try that. This was a, um, a 40 meter low pass filter. So we'll just uh, move everything over. Right, there we go. I didn't need the input and output capacitor, so there's just wires uh, wires there. So, uh, taking everything off of this board and put it on this board. There we go. Um, we're going to use the uh, spectrum analyzer to do the uh, transmission measurement. So, first of all, we need to make a through. So I've got a sh uh, a through on the cable here so we can turn on the tracking generator. Let's see, well, first of all, we wanna have um, frequency limits. Let's see, let's go from uh, one megahertz to 30 megahertz. Okay, we'll go from one to 30. Turn on the tracking generator. We'll track it at minus 10. Oops. Uh, and, uh, Let's see here, let's do a, turn it on, we'll store it, we'll normalize it, and we'll move it up to the top. All right, there we go. So let's put in our, let's put in our filter and see if it looks the same as it used to or different. There we go. Uh, looks very nice. It looks better than the uh, the uh, the prototype. Uh, it looks a little bit cleaner to me as far as wigglies and stuff. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's measure the um, cutoff point here. It's cutting off around eight and a half megahertz. That's good. So you're going to be transmitting here. Let's say you transmit at uh, seven point one megahertz, that's you there. And then let's do a second marker and we'll do a 14.2, which would be the first harmonic, right? Uh, let's see here. Uh, second marker, uh, normal, there we go. 14.2 megahertz. Um, what did I just do? Oh, select trace one. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Rookie mistake. So I had I had it uh, moving on trace two, which isn't being displayed at the present time. So it was it was there. If I had turned on trace two, it would have been there. But we're not. It's not what we're showing. So okay. So fourteen point two megahertz. There we go. And uh, yeah, that looks very very nice. 
So we're down about minus 30, minus 37 maybe, 35, 36. Um, so yeah, so not bad. So imagine that your second harmonic was uh, down maybe minus 30, and then this will put another minus 30 on it, so now you'll be down minus 60 on your second harmonic. So that's what you want to see. And uh, it's a um, basically a flat filter, so you can use it anything below, uh, anything below that eight megahertz. So there you go. Now I have uh, boards uh, for prototyping different filters. Uh, I'll make these available on my share site on PCBWay. Uh, I'll put a link down below where you can go order these boards if you like. And um, if you want to know what values to use, I'll, I'll put the values that I used uh, on the explanation on that site. But um, this filter design just came out of the ARRL handbook. So you can just you can just find these and you can make them for other bands as well. You know, if you want to make it for 20 meters or 30 meters or whatever, um, you could uh, find the values there and uh, put in what you want or run it into a, a spice program. Try to figure out what it is you like and uh, yeah, go from there. Uh, the back is solid copper and the top is solid copper and there's just a little bit of traces in there. So yeah, there you go.